Hey, what's up guys? If you're new to my channel, my name is Mattia. I'm an Italian time-lapse and a hyperlapse photographer and live in Madrid. And today I want to show you how to make this video look like this video. So you know when you come back from your shoot and you run your time-lapse and your video looks like a strobe from a club? Well, <laughs> that flashing is called flickering and it's caused by some small adjustment of your aperture while shooting a time-lapse. And Today I want to show you a couple of ways to fix it and to avoid on the first place. If you're shooting during the day, there are two methods to avoid flickering. The first one is to detach the lens from the camera, so the camera won't be able to give a signal to the lens to open and close the aperture. So the aperture will remain, really remain fixed. And the second one is to shoot with longer exposure. I normally shoot from a half second upwards and that should be, should be fine. When you're shooting sunset and sunrise, um, it gets a little bit complicated. There are a few ways to shoot the holy grail, which is the transition between uh, day to night and vice versa, night to day. Um, the standard way is, the, is in manual. So every time the light is changing, uh, you adjust the shutter speed and the ISO. I wouldn't touch the aperture, because you, know, you will introduce vignette on the time lapse, which is very difficult to fix it. So another way to shoot in sunset and sunrise is on uh, aperture priority uh, or AV mode, which is a little bit easier because it's the camera that makes all the changing and the adjustment of the settings. Uh, but depending on the camera that you have, it can be more smooth or less smooth than the manual mode. I shoot on Sony and the aperture priority works fantastically. And uh, then between you and me, I haven't actually shot a manual mode for over a year, I think. Now that you have uh, your time lapse done, you need three software Lightroom, LA Time Lapse, and After Effects. Let's jump to the computer, I'll show you how I work on it. So, for the time lapse during the day, once you have your sequence imported on Lightroom, uh, you open LA Time Lapse, and then you go to Basic Workflow and create the keyframes. I normally create two on the beginning and the end, which is enough because nothing's changing. You save it, go back to Lightroom, read metadata. So this is the two you just saved, and then you just make the edit. Save it, go back to Add a Time Lapse, reload it, click Auto Transition, even though there's not any transition between those two keyframe, and then you do the flicker, which is smooth out all the all the sequence. Apply and save, and that's it. So now we open After Effects, we import the sequence that we re, we just edited, create a composition uh, with the ten line sequence, and render it with your setting. If you want to know what code and setting I use to render my clips, let me know in the comments and I will make a video about that. Right, so now you have your video rendered, go back to After Effects and check if there is any flickering. So, let's see. Looks pretty damn good to me. Right, that's perfect. So, LR Time Labs work, work very well. Also, we avoid flickering by having long, longer shutter speed as well on the shot, nice. So for the sunset, sunrise, time lapse, more or less the way of the flicker is the same. So once you have your sequence import on Lightroom, you go to LL time lapse and you create the keyframes. So it says, yeah, it uh, looks like a holy gray sequence. Yeah, okay. So now it creates all the sequence, all the keyframes, and then you click on holy gray wizard which is compensate all the changes. You say save and saving, and you go back to Lightroom. And on Lightroom, you just go read metadata. So it's reading the metadata, and then it creates the keyframe. And now you start editing the keyframes. We'll do it this quickly. Okay, so now you edit all the keyframe photos, you save the metadata again, go back to LR time lapse, you reload, so it's reloading all the changes that we've done, 
and then you click on auto transition so it'll make a smooth transition between the first shot and the last shot and there you go all these are the changes so for the flickering normally this one will be okay but if you want to get a little bit more precise so the only thing that is remain constant more or less is the sky so you just draw a square on the sky so is the reading all in the sky so you can see the flickering all in the sky and not on all the cars and lights on the street so once he has the reading go to you can do visual preview and then visual the flickering but it takes a while so i go uh, i go back to basic workflow and then the flicker so it gets to be smoother and then normally uh, leave it at 10 apply and that's it and save it so now i save it go to back to lightroom you read metadata and you see the changes okay so now you go to after effects and you import the rendered time lapse and create composition we check if there is any flickering because there is a, a big screen changing all the lights and we got a lot of lot of traffic over here a time lapse did work but you know you still see it to be all flickering what i'm doing is to get a plugin it's called flicker free from uh, Digital Anarchy. I found out about this uh, plugin thanks to Philip Bloom. He was um, explaining how to get rid of the flicker on the slow motion. So I thought, hmm, maybe that could work on the, on the time lapse. So download it and uh, I tried for a few time lapses where I was unable to the flicker perfectly. Uh, I apply it and boom, the time lapse was perfect. So what you need to do is just drag and drop. You leave a time lapse, you know, you go other settings but you live in time lapse i normally leave it like this i don't touch anything and it works perfectly and then that's it you render it and done easy peasy so for the aperture priority sequence you do more or less the same as the day time lapse but instead of creating two keyframes one at the beginning one at the end you need to create at least five because of the light and the colors are changes during this during your sequence you go to LR time lapse keyframe wizard and then you you create five keyframe save it and that's it now you go to back to lightroom and do the same as before on the manual time lapse uh, after you do everything you go back to after effects you render it again if lr time lapse wasn't perfect add a flicker free plugin and that's it you've done so this is how i normally the flickering my time lapses if you want to see a more in-depth tutorial or lr time lapse i'll link it down below Gunter did an amazing job on those tutorials. In the description you can find a Time Labs affiliate link which helps my channel. If you have any questions please leave any comments down below, I will try to answer all your questions. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this and maybe some vlog in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!